Hi, I'm Molly Beth Griffin, and I'm going to read to you today from my picture book, Rhoda's Rock Hunt, written by me, illustrations by Jennifer Bell, and published by the Minnesota Historical Society Press. Rhoda's Rock Hunt. When Rhoda's Auntie June and Uncle Jonah took her on a long, long hike from their up north cabin, her shower was a bucket of cold lake water, her dinner was salami and cheese, and her bed was a skinny little pad and a ratty sleeping bag. But she didn't mind. Because of the rocks. Rhoda loved rocks. Smooth rocks and bumpy rocks and sparkly rocks and stripy rocks and rocks shaped like hearts and hats and horns. All right, Auntie June said, but you have to carry them in your pack. They were moving camp every day and had to carry everything in big, heavy, bulky packs. Rhoda's pack was smaller, but she was in charge of hauling it through woods and over streams and to the big lake all by herself. One day they hiked through a beautiful birch forest with rustling leaves and bird songs overhead. Rhoda found jagged rocks and bumpy rocks in that forest, and one with tiny sparkly bits that glinted in the dappled sunlight. Ooh. Into her pack they all went, oof, and Rhoda trudged on, wiping sweat off her forehead. Looks like someone needs a bucket shower, Uncle Jonah joked. Rhoda didn't laugh. The next day they crossed a rushing stream with whispering water all around and dragonflies whizzing past. Rhoda found lots of smooth, round rocks in that stream and one with a curve that fit into her palm just right. Ooh. Into her pack they all went, yarg, and Rhoda waited on, slumping under the weight, her tummy crumbling. Sounds like someone needs more salami, Auntie June joked. Rhoda didn't laugh. That night, Rhoda hardly slept at all. A pine cone poked her through that skinny little pad, and her ratty sleeping bag was damp and stinky. She was tired and dirty and hungry on the last day of their trip, and crabby, too, until they arrived at the big lake. Waves crashed on the shore and gulls called overhead. The water stretched out to the horizon and the beach was covered with millions and billions of rocks. Rhoda ran her hands over all those sun-worn treasures. She found red ones and blue ones and stripy ones, and then she looked harder and found tiny banded ones that glowed the color of sunsets. Ooh, into her pack they all went. Time to go, Uncle Jonah called. It's not far now, said Auntie June. At the end of this one last hike, the cabin, a real shower, a hot meal, a soft bed. Rhoda jumped up and grabbed her pack and hoisted, but nothing happened. She pulled and pushed and panted, oof, oof, yarg, but the pack wouldn't budge. Help, she cried, but her auntie's arms were full and her uncle was all loaded up. This pack was Rhoda's to carry, and it was full of rocks. She couldn't leave her treasures. She tried loading up her pockets, but the weight made her short sag, and she couldn't hike like that. She thought about staying on that beach forever, but Auntie June and Uncle Jonah were waiting. Besides, Rhoda really needed a shower and dinner and bed. She loved her rocks, all her beautiful rocks, but she couldn't keep them all. She had to let some go. So she took them out one at a time and stacked them on a table-like slab down by the water. Rhoda worked with the weight of each rock, with the curves and bumps and bulges of each rock, until all those forest rocks and river rocks and big lake rocks balanced in perfect towers. Well, almost all. Back into her pockets went the one glinting forest rock and the one palm-snuggling river rock and a small handful of tiny glowing agates from the big lake. Then she smiled at her rock carns, the towers of souvenirs she was leaving behind. Finally, she slung her pack onto her back and followed Auntie June and Uncle Jonah all the way to their cozy cabin for a hot shower and a delicious dinner in a soft, soft bed were waiting just for Rhoda. And a sun-warmed windowsill was waiting just for her very best rocks.